Congratulations. You found the one station that plays Ghana's best urban music. YFM. Listen to YFM 107.9 Accra, 102.5 Kumasi, and 97.9 in Takarati. Our guest on Wiley the Board series this morning has spent most of his life making music, using it to entertain people, to inform, to educate, and while at it, even developing new genres and then rhythms. Born here in Accra, Ghana, he had his secondary education at the Accra Academy, Accra from 1975 to 1982. He continued to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumase, Ken USC, where he studied publishing skills for his bachelor's degree. Some of his earliest experiences in music were during his secondary school days uh, when he played drums for the Accra Academy School Band. At the university level, he was able to play uh, art playing of guitar and then bass guitar to his arts. He subsequently featured for various Christian groups with his art in Accra and in Kumasi. Over the years, he's worked with various high-profile Ghanaian and international music artists of various genres. Some of these artists include Kojenchi, Ophorian Ponsa, Dasibre Jamana, Nana Finn, Becca, Irene Logan. You can hear Lotenya in the back, Nana Kwame, Wuta of all. Everyone in the High Life Circus. I mean, he's worked with a lot of the names. Uh, in the Hip Life Circus, Zap has worked with Reggie Rockstone. We played a song before this. I mentioned Lokenya, Obuo, Achiame. In the Gospel side, he's worked with Tego Sisters, Susie and Matt. You remember Susie and Matt, right? And and Helena Gabo. A lot of names. In 2008, he served on the opening and closing ceremony subcommittee of the Confederation of African National Football Tournament, AFCON, that was hosted by Ghana. He served as a music director and guitarist for the Burger um, Concert High Life. It's actually Burger, right? Yes, here, Burger. <laughs> Burger Concert High Life Tour that was organized by the Goethe Institute in 2008 as part of Ghana's 51st Independence Day celebration. Guys, he served as a resident judge and guest judge on various music shows, some of which include Stars of the Future by Vodafone, uh, Mentor, Nest Cafe, uh, African Revelation, and the MTN Hitmaker Show. He's a member of the Ghana Music Awards Planning Committee and a facilitator of WAPI, an art showcase and interruptive platform organized by the British Council. His interest is in fusion of different genres of music, such as rock, jazz, orchestra, and pop blended with African rhythms to create new sounds. His works have been recognized and awarded by various platforms. In 1994, he was a judge best instrumentalist by the Entertainment Critics and Art Society of Ghana. He was a judge recording engineer of the year back in 2002, Ghana Music Awards. In 2011, Ghana Music Awards, he won the award for producer of the year. The maestro himself, Zab Mallet, graces the show this morning with his larger than live personality today. And it's going to be a lot of talk around creative arts, music business, and that, of course, his real life story as well. So thank you so much. Uh, we're most grateful for this opportunity, I mean, for honoring us today. It's my pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure, it's good man. to have you around here. And I love the mood when you came in. Uh, the songs were sort of like bringing back a lot of memories. Yeah, 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 it was bringing back a lot of memories. When you hear these songs, how do you feel? Uh, what kind of zone does it send you into? Well, it's, 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 it sends me back to the TBT, you know, the, the yeah. throwback time. You yeah. Know? Um, and, and, and then I feel, I feel it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's all coming, it all comes back all of a sudden. And it's like, oh, okay. So this was what it was like before. But yeah. um, things have changed. You just have to get used to the, you know, to change. And mm. that's it. But it, it's, it's very elating mm. when you hear things when you hear them like years ago when when you were putting together all these works mm -hmm. did you did you see yourself coming this far i mean becoming a part of ghana's timeless set of you know uh, music memories did you see it that way or you were just w yeah um th that was actually what um uh, i'm I bold to say what i was i was vying for mm. because um my 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 early my earliest influence was uh, quincy jones okay Quincy Jones of America. Mm. Uh, he's about 85 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. I think 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88 yeah, yeah. 88, 88, seven years now. And he, back then in the early 80s, he was my mentor. And he, his was not just to produce, his was to, to, to create uh, different sound, different, you know, so that was the direction I was looking at. Um, just not just being, not just playing music yeah. or earning from music, yeah. but being uh, a major part of being an inspiration or being a, a major impact 
in, in, in the field. Yes, mm -hmm. that was what I was gearing towards. So is it right to say music has been a part of your ambitions since childhood? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. You are, you are not at risk when you say that at all. Because it's been my, my dream mm. from, from childhood days since I was in school. From the days? Even, yes, yes. Yeah, even though I was, I was, I was reading well, but... Mm. Um, Musical was always actually is is my father okay who brought all these things mm. because he, he has been into music himself mm. and uh, because of his work he was he was a technical mm. man yeah and so uh, all the bands were coming to him mm -hmm. from um, Amachi the Day to uh, AB Cancel yeah, 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 all yeah. the bands were coming to, were him, coming to so, him so that was how I got affiliated with music it, it was it was something it was drawing me mm. so I felt myself drawn to it but did he know you had interest in it were yeah, you the yeah, active yeah, part yeah. because he saw me you know anytime like he repairs a guitar mm -hmm. and puts it down I went take I went pick it up and start <laughs> playing you know and I had an uncle too my late uncle okay uh, who died may rest in peace he had also had a guitar I was always picking and learning from mm. so so they knew I was I was uh, I was I was getting to that yeah. even though I was schooling all right I, I didn't drop out of school. That means they they never had an issue when they realized you wanted to take it full time. Um, maybe by then I wasn't. I was, maybe by then it looked like a, like a hobby to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but to me it was something I was working towards. Mm -hmm. You know, so I almost dropped out of school, but almost yes at university level. Wow. Yes, I almost didn't continue, but I said no. Um, it's not right for me. Yeah. Let me just finish my education before I branch into it because it's all part of it mm. so yeah so 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 I went into that's that's how come I went to the university and completed after three years all right um help us understand the kind of sounds that were there while you were growing up I mean you mentioned right now that your dad was actively involved in mm -hmm. music growing up um I was born <laughs> I was born somewhere around the 1990s mm -hmm. and then my sounds were the the, the hip life, you know, mm -hmm. the Lord Kenyas mm -hmm. and the likes, and then mm -hmm. the A.B. Crenshaws mm -hmm. and the rest, you know, the, their peak time. Mm -hmm. What kind of sounds were there before you brought in all these new styles that you, you worked on after you, before you started contributing to these ones? I mean, growing up. Yeah, oh, well, actually, actually, it was, it was more live, you know, then um, technology hadn't really um, come this far. Yeah, yeah. So it was more of live. Everything had to be live. Mm -hmm. uh, the recordings were all analog. There was no computer. <laughs> Nothing. So it was all, everything was created live. So if you have to create um, a wind sound, mm. you have to go to the wind. You have to go into the wind, go, go, go into a storm and wow. put the microphone in the storm to get the, the sound. Even, you know, where right now it's like you just pick a sample and then yeah, just yeah. press on the keyboard. Then shoot, all these have, sound effects we had, none of that no, was. No, 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 no. None of them wow, existed. You had to yeah. manually cut Yes, them. we had to manually do it ourselves and all that, you know. So, so it, was, wow. it was a lot of work then. It was a lot of work. So, so even then, Owning a studio was a lot of uh, 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 financial investment. Mm -hmm. It was not because everything was so huge. Yeah. It was out of the box. Mm -hmm. Now everything is in the box. Mm -hmm. Everything everything is in the computer. You, you know, just so come on a simple pen drive and then you have a simple <laughs> pen drive and then that's it. But, but back then you had to carry it. You yeah. know, your keyboards, yeah. your sound modules, yeah. everything. You know, so, 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 so that's how we created. And back then we were influenced a lot. You know, Africa, Ghana, we were influenced a lot by America. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. But everything or every trend from every generation affects our generation as well. Such that when we're, we're disco, in the disco era, mm -hmm. disco affected our style of music in Ghana. Mm. That, such that we're doing Boga life. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? So every time there's a generation, a uh, change in generation or trend, it affects our music. It affects us yes. as well. Like hip life. Yeah. yeah. Hip life was affected or high life got uh, 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 bitten by uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, hip hop. Yeah. Yes. There was an injection from hip hop into high life. That, what that brought us hip life. Hip life. Yeah. So always, I don't know. I don't know. And then today too, we have something like we we'll call what drill. Drill. Yeah. yeah we we'll call yeah. It uh, trap and all yeah, that. True, you know. True, so true. so these things always affect mm. Ghanaian music, mm. whether whether I like it or mm. not. Yes. Thank you so much. Help me understand the kind of how, uh, you know family setting you grew up in. Um, you just give us insight into the fact that daddy was into music, mm -hmm. but um, what job was mommy involved in? How many siblings growing up at home? What kind of home oh, was you up in? Actually, I was I was born alone. I, I'm an only child. Wow. Yes, yes. But my my my, my mom had um, two okay two uh, girls before I was born. Mm -hmm. Before she met my mom, and I was born alone. So I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm, I'm an only child. It was fun, right? Yes. Oh, well, it, it's 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 funny. It's as it's ups, it's as it's downs. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, sometimes you get you get 
you, you get used to being very alone, mm -hmm. not lonely, mm -hmm. but very alone. Mm -hmm. You get used to it mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was it was fun being mm -hmm. around, uh, around. But I had a lot of cousins because okay. I was living in the family. Mm -hmm. well. I had a lot of I had a lot of cousins and a lot of people, a lot of friends around to play with. So mm -hmm. it was okay back then. In the that was in the sixties and yeah. early seventies. Back then. Ghana was cool. Ghana didn't used to be like this. <laughs> Ghana has changed tremendously. How, how different? How different are things? I mean, apart from infrastructure. Yeah, apart from infrastructure, um, the the human it's the human beings themselves were very, you know, like looking out for each other. True. You understand? Like suddenly you, you see a child doing something, you are you're able to correct and go and tell the the, the child goes to yeah, tell yeah, the parents yeah. that oh. Eh, uh, Reverend Eskin touched, uh, he hit me because I did this. And yeah. the, the parents asked well, They'll come for you. Yeah, because you didn't do well, that's why he okay, hit okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. You understand what I'm saying? But Unlike I'm today, yeah. when it's like, hey, why did you, even, why did you even, mm. even look at my son? Why did you yeah. even smile at Why did you even laugh at my son? You know, that kind of thing. So, so it makes uh, a lot of things, you know. Because back then, we were really looking out for mm -hmm. each other. I remember, let me tell you a story. Talk to us. <laughs> I was playing the gutter. Back then, the gutter in front of our house at Asylum Down was so clean. Okay. It was so clean. Water was running every day. Today, go and look. The water, the gutter poses. The, the gutter poses. It poses. <laughs> the the way. The way. <laughs> can you imagine? The gutter, gutter way is it, 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 still and posing. Sometimes you see the oh, gutter. Some of the gutters is very, very amazing. And I was playing the gutter. And you know, back then, we had this thing. Uh, we have this thing we call gutter race. Okay. Where we put little uh, uh, items like matchsticks, cigarette butts, to and race. The water, the water carries, carries them. Race. Okay. Okay. So you know, you know, back then, kids. <laughs> and I had come from school mm -hmm. in the afternoon. I was trying my horses. I was trying my 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 items. Yes. My horses. We call them horses. Horses. Okay. I was sitting by the gutter trying them, and all of a sudden, I get a knock on my head. <laughs> Fuck! And I was like, "Why? Well, look at who it was." Who was it? It was a guy who was sweeping, who used to sweep the street, the gutters. Every, we had people who swept the gutters mm. every, every morning. morning. Mm. And it was a guy who swept the gutter every morning. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he uttered an, 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 an outside word I don't like to utter. Uh, to, <laughs> to utter. He uttered an outside word at me and told me, and I, run, and I rushed and ran inside the house. And when I went, my father was like, ah, what's, hap what's happening? And I was like, eh, the man who, who sweeps the gutter came to hit came me to by the head. Keep. And my father turned and then asked me, so what were you doing there? Mm. Why did you get hit? Yeah. What were you doing there? Yeah. It's different now. Yeah. The story has changed. The story has changed. And I'm sure, I'm sure if you had told him what you did, I'm sure you would have even had an additional knock. Well, he, 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 he almost did. I almost <laughs> did, but, but he, he was busy, so he didn't actually mind me. I told him what I did anyway, but he didn't actually mind me. Mm. Yeah. You know, so the guy just walked, and mm. the guy at that time they had gone. Mm. Wow. He had gone, you know. So <laughs> you know that 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 shows the extent to which things yeah. were speak and span mm. in those days. Mm. The gutter was so clean, my brother. Every every day mm. we had people cleaning the gutters. Mm. Every day. Today it doesn't happen. I don't understand. I don't know what is. I don't know where it went wrong in Ghana. I I feel the sense of responsibility has gone down. Um, the older we grow, yes, the, the, yeah. the more foolish we become. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, people, the older the country gl yeah. grows, the, the, the worse our attitude. People don't care. I think I think that's that's the reason. I mean, and I, if people don't care, don't we have people who can make people care? That's why, for instance, I went to Chicago. I was in Chicago airport, and the guy was uh, Felix who was coming to pick me. Okay. And where they park, where they pick people, they're not supposed to pick people there. But you know, usually people come, and it's like they just want to just pick mm -hmm. people seconds, and then there's. And there was this policeman walking up and down that stretch. You come there, he doesn't allow you to, to stop. Mm -hmm. He just gets to you, move, move on, yeah. move on. So that's, he doesn't allow you to even begin. Yeah. But here, we sit down, when somebody comes, a, a, a non-designated area. we're not proactive. Yes, a non-designated area where people are not supposed to be. Somebody comes there, starts putting a table there, some toffees on it, some watch cigarettes, the person some get stuff, it and then we sit down and watch the person. Mm. And, and then, then the the, the thing starts developing. Instead of telling the person from the beginning, yeah. from the very beginning, that look, this place is not designated for, for, for trading, so please we leave. We won't. We, we will sit down for the thing. And then look, one look, look at the motorway, for instance. <laughs> what brings me on the motorway? While you are driving on the highway, expressway, then people are crossing. Mm -hmm. 
And if people are, even if people are not supposed to cross, in abroad, you know when you're crossing in an expressway, police will arrest you. Yeah, jaywalking. And probably, probably send you to the uh, mental institution mm. because you're not well, you might not be well mm. to cross on an expressway. But here we find a, a, a major expressway, freeway, and people are crossing. And it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. So even if people are crossing, why can't we just even build uh, an overpass or yeah, something for the, for the pedestrians? So the ones that have been built so they are not using it. But at the, at, the, at the end of the day, somebody somebody is going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to lose lives yeah. and all that. Can you tell? Can you imagine? Twenty first century, we are still traveling from here to Kumasi on single lanes. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? From here to Kumasi in single lane, why wouldn't we have accidents? The accidents that, that happen usually, tell me, aren't they head to head collisions? True. We we can avoid. Look, you, do you know Portrasi? No, please. Ah, uh, you are not. You are, you are young. There, was a, there used to be a, a route called Portrasi. On the Kumasi Highway, when you're going to Kumasi, okay. a route called Portras, very dangerous. A lot of people, uh, lots of cars and buses fell there at a, at a point. So when Kufoki was like, ah, this thing, we can't have it anymore. So let's take the route, the route through um, another way. So he took the route, made the, made, made the route, and then now, now, now it's better. No, nothing happens there. Mm. I think we should be proactive. Portras mm. has been eradicated from mm. the from the route mm. and forever. So that's it. We just need to take practice steps, and, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But we just sit down for things to be happening, and then we sit down and watch, and, and, and it seems we just seem look on unconcerned. Yeah, we seem to be happy with it. Anyways, uh, we'll touch on that. I think these are pressing issues. Uh, we need we need extra time to touch on. I mean, it has to do with our yeah, attitudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, get serious. to that before the show serious. ends. Now, um, beyond music, sorry, I think no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's allowed, it's allowed. I mean, you are trying to let us understand how different things were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You things know, were different. Things your were time different. and then now. Yeah. Which I, is I keep telling my boys that look, the way Ghana is today, that wasn't what it used to be when I was growing up. When I was like you. But do you think there's hope? Do you think we can sort of like speed things up and go back to how things were back then? I mean, the, the attitude, attitude-wise. Do you think we can get there? Yes, I think. I, I, I think. I certainly, I certainly think we can. Okay. Um, if we start from the clergy, okay. okay. if we start from the house of God, mm. trust me. That's where people listen, right? That's where people look. Mm. These politicians, they have only f a mandate. They have a mandate four years, eight years. Mm -hmm. But you, a man of God, your yeah, mandate forever. is forever. Yeah. When you speak, people will listen. Whether your prophecy is right or wrong, <laughs> whether your prophecy is right, like somebody made a prophecy <laughs> two days ago, uh, he still has, he still has his following. Yeah, so like it even doubled. I think it doubled. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, 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 you see, they have the ability. Mm -hmm. I believe they mm -hmm. have the the, mm -hmm. the 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 power to 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 cause a change, mm -hmm. and causing a change does not mean that delivering people from mm -hmm. demons and things. Mm -hmm. It's delivering people from laziness and at, and, and bad attitude. Mm -hmm. And some of these things, you just need to talk to people yeah. about it. We, we need just to hammer on it. We just we are, we are all, we're always dwelling on the, on the spiritual and mm. living and living the basic things in life. I think we forget the fact that we're human beings. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Stop this. Beside music, um, did you have any dream, any career path? Because along the line, I, I I think you studied publishing and all these yes. things. But as a child, still staying around when you were growing up. Well, um, did you see yourself doing anything else be beyond music? Well, probably, probably I would have been in the army. In the army, yes. Probably. Because of your height, yes, my height, my structure. You know, uh, I would have been uh, probably in the army. Mm -hmm. Any of the security, mm -hmm. any of the security uh, agents, like probably mm -hmm. police or whatever. Police, um, was there external pressure to get you to do that? I mean, oh, in no, this no, no, Ghana, no, 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 no. The pressure. So, was the I was all No, no, no. The pressure was not there. Was there was no pressure. Uh, but I, I just wanted to, even though it was my mom's, mm -hmm. my, my mom really hated mm -hmm. it at that time. She didn't want to hear me talk about police or soldier. Or soldier. Her brother herself was a policeman, and okay. so she didn't like it when uh, any time I mentioned it. <laughs> I mentioned it. <laughs> While studying uh, publishing at KNUS, you added the lead and bass guitars mm -hmm. to the list of instruments mm -hmm. you played. I mean, I mentioned that earlier. Yes. Did the music act at any point, uh, you know, did it become a distraction to your studies? Um, because you were studying, you were doing your books. You mentioned that you almost dropped out. Yeah. Uh, was music... And the activities you were involved in, the reason why you wanted to drop uh, drop it, or uh, did it distract you at any point? Yes and no. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, uh, music, I was so much into music uh, at a point when I was at Tech. Okay. At a point, almost every weekend, I was in Accra mm -hmm. playing gigs. I was in Accra almost every weekend. And this was like a seven-hour drive to 
you know, it wasn't it wasn't four or back five. Then, years. It was a five, mm-hmm. five, six mm-hmm. hours. Yes, almost every weekend I was in Accra, and having tra- and you know, with my long legs, sitting in the bus <laughs> was, was an issue. issue. Back then, it was new plan buses. Yeah, 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 the buses yeah. were not comfortable, and you know, I had to struggle every day, every, every almost every weekend I was in Accra, and when I when I used when I came to Accra. Uh, it means I would go back on Monday. It means on Monday I'll miss lectures. You miss your lectures. Mm, mm, <laughs> so almost mm. every Monday I was missing lectures. And at a point, uh, I almost didn't get registered. My d- dean almost didn't register. And can you see serious? Yes. My, my, my dean almost, uh, Mr. Mate, may he may rest in peace. He almost didn't register me at a point because he thought I was just flou- uh, flaunting and, and I was just... Uh, uh, I was just Playing around, you know, even though it didn't affect me yeah, academically, yeah, yeah. it didn't affect yeah. my records or my results. Mm-hmm. But you know, back then we're introducing the uh, the uh, assessment, mm-hmm. continuous assessment mm-hmm. thing, and so it, I, I was affected by the continu- continuous assessment. And I mean, tech had mid sems and all that. So I'm yes, sure you might have yes. missed a few. Of yes, them. Uh, and I missed, I missed, I missed <laughs> quite a few. I missed, you know, but it didn't affect. Uh, eventually, I came up with a second class upper. Great. Yes, Great. yes, eventually. You did it. You did it yes, anyways. Yes, yes, wow. Yes. Tell us about the period after national service and becoming your own man. Um, were you so actively involved? I mean, this was you skipping class uh, for music. Mm-hmm. Now you were done. National service. Where did you work? Was music still in there? Yeah, m- music was still... Actually, um, right after school, I traveled. Okay. After, 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 yeah, we, you know, back then we, we did a service thing before even going to mm-hmm. university, mm-hmm. if you remember. Mm-hmm. We did a service because uh, at that time we had a two year, there was a break, there was a, an aluta in school yes, where yes, we, had yes, to, yes. we had to break for like a year or something. And um, so uh, after school, I just went to, I, I traveled to the UK uh, for a, a few months and came back. And what was the purpose? Uh, music, stay, still music. I, okay. I went to, yeah, I went to tour with a with a gospel group called Abandoned Life. Wow! In those days, yeah, uh, came back and I went again the following year mm-hmm. to 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 uh, to tour with them again, mm-hmm. uh, Denmark and Norway and a couple of places, mm-hmm. and then came back. Uh, you know, so so I, I was, uh, and then when I when I came back in 1990, that was when I settled and I said, okay, this is what exactly what I want to do. I want to be it behind. I don't want to be the man yeah, yeah. in front. We've had too many people in front. Now we need some. We need a, we need staunch people to be at the back. Yeah. To to draw for those up front to shine. Mm-hmm. When you when you had the opportunity uh, to travel, mm-hmm. I mean, this was you, a young guy in Ghana. Mm-hmm. You were down with school. You could do music. Um, were you never tempted to stay? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that, yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I didn't know. I don't know. But at that time, um, yeah, people were making, uh, people were migrating. People yeah, were making, I mean, people were relocating and stuff. But wasn't this around that gig time when people would no, travel? No, no, no. That, 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 that gig time was earlier. Earlier, okay. That was earlier, Accra. But this, uh, this was, uh, let's say, post Agege, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I didn't, I didn't have that kind of yearning to to live outside. Probably mm-hmm. because I was more. Uh, more in tune with Ghana. I, I loved to be around, you know, the freedom we get, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the, 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 the dust, the, the beautiful things like the dust and the mud and the stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out yeah, outside, yeah. you know. So, um, and, you know, outside, when you're bored, who do you talk to? If the person is busy uh, well. about here, you can just call, call Rev. Charlie, Charlie Rev. Charlie Rev. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Rev. Yeah, Charlie Rev. Yeah, yeah, you know, that kind of thing, you yeah. know. So, so then I was I wasn't moved to even though today if you ask me I'll mm. tell you yes I, if I get the opportunity I'll move. <laughs> Simple like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gan, you have a brother. <laughs> but I mean I, you I'm sure you you might have sat down to really think about it mean Kogana and I say uh mean tsunaka kra. Look, I had the opportunity mm. to remain there mm. in 1989. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, in 1989. Mm. But uh, it would have also made me lose some kind of opportunities mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. you know, because I was then I was courting, you know, and my my wife mm-hmm. uh, we had we hadn't married, and I was getting ready to, you know, get so you had to come back, so I had to come back and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I got married in '92 mm-hmm. or '93, '93. So there was no way I could you could have stayed. I could yeah. have stayed in '89, '89, '92, '93, just so close. Mm-hmm. So. 
I had to come because of mm. certain, you know, I had to come and start making a family. Exactly. <laughs> so that is on the family side, but career-wise, when you decided to come to Ghana, um, what was the plan? What was the long-term plan? I'm sure you might have put down some specific plans. Okay, uh, when I come back, I need to do this. I need to get this happening, this, that, that, that. What were the plans you took? What plan did you come back with? Oh, okay. When I, when I came down, first of all, um, I had to get myself into into the job because I was I was now getting fresh, so I had to go and um, le- uh, align myself with a studio in yeah. Tema. Then the studios were were not uh, many. Uh, as as many as we have them now. Today, uh, every for every three houses there's a studio, or every, five <laughs> every house there's a studio. <laughs> you know, back then, you know, so I had to go to Tema, even though I was staying all the way at Dansuma. I had to go to Tema every mm-hmm. morning to go and. Uh, get my hands on mm-hmm. how to mm-hmm. uh, work with the, then it was analog purely yeah. analog and yeah. we we're doing the hybrid mm. the hybrid where the analog was mm-hmm. mixing with the digital then we then, then we tra- then the transition to digital hadn't come okay yet so we we're doing the hybrid we we're doing the vocals on the tape and then doing the the, the keyboards and the MIDI and stuff by the, by the computer so I had to go and learn. Uh, a friend of mine, George Avan, he gave me the opportunity to go and learn with um, Nana Buama at Tema. Okay. At that time, Willie Roy, the late Willie yes, Roy, yes, was yes. there. So I knew Willie Roy back, way then. back. Yes, way back. Even before then, I knew Willie Roy. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Now, when did you have your first breakthrough as a record producer? Uh, Do you remember? Yes, um, I, that was um, when I did uh, uh, the Tego Sisters. Okay. Stay in my heart. We did it in London. Okay. Actually, that was my first production I did with them. And then uh, coming back to Ghana, uh, I moved from when I moved from Tema, I came to uh, CHM at Mataiko mm-hmm. Combined House of Music. Uh, I came there, and my first hit was a gospel with Francis A.J. That song, you know, that it was a hit. It was a hit back then, you know. And that was my first, that was my first major break. Mm. I remember. Then came others like uh, Hannah Marfa. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, exactly. Exactly. That song. And then, and then, yes. And then, and then came Elena Rabos, and then okay. came Getty and Friends. You know, so. So you know, uh, so, so you start. You basically started with the gospel side. Yes, yes. I act, so I actually pride myself as one of the few producers in Ghana who has had a hit in almost all genres, all genres. in Ghana. That's true. That's I've true. had a hit in gospel. I've had a hit in reggae. I've had a hit in in high life. I've hip had life. a hit in <laughs> hip life. You know. So <laughs> I think you are the original hit maker. You know. Yeah, the original hit maker. Well, we try. We so try. help us understand also, right? Um, mm-hmm. Now I know. A uh, sound engineer, well, mm-hmm. um, a beat maker would put the beat together, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then send it to an artist or put it down. An artist listens to it and then decides to jump on it. How I think, was was it like that back then still? Or the person would have to come and sing and then you cook something up or you work to yeah. together on it? Yeah, back then, back then, uh, back then, even as some people do now, mm. they, they, they work out their song, they write their songs mm. and then come to, they write, they've written their song, mm-hmm. probably based on a certain rhythm they had. Yeah probably just came off mm. their minds uh, but they come to you and then you are the one who builds yeah. the flesh around it mm. so you play around it for them so it's not like you cook it you mm. don't you, you don't like cook you, it and let it wait for mm. them no you you you, you are you help with the creative process process mm. w- with the artist mm. not that you've done it for him mm. to come and work on no uh, even though you are still when you do it this way that like the way they're doing now it still makes you part of the creative mm-hmm. process but yeah. back then the artist will come and sing to you and tell you like well, this is how i want it uh, maybe i want it in a reggae form or i want it in a high life or okay then maybe you discuss okay uh, high life it will be a bit slow or high life will be, can we make it fast then you discuss things like tempo discuss things like keys and stuff like that you know it's not like you just put it there and then the artist can whether the key is high or not he takes it just like jump that. on it no back then we sit down I, even as i do now mm-hmm. i sit down I and we discuss things like key. Oh, the mm. tempo, the speed is okay. I mean, maybe can we go a bit faster? Can mm. we go a bit slower? True. It's no, this is too drab or something. Can we raise a key? Or oh, the key is too high. You can't make it. So let's begin things like that. Yeah. Those are the production. Maestro, t- tell me 
how it was a profitable an industry back then i mean record producing how how lucrative was it and i mean you just mentioned that you you were traveling you you recorded a song in london and that it sounds all juicy and rosy but was it really paying back then oh yes how yes, was yes. the payment system like i mean yeah yeah pay, 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 the payment system hey, man, i mean you just get you just do your job you get paid and then that's it you just charge and get paid and then you just walk off and then that was it that was it even though it wasn't the right thing we we're yeah. doing but you know we didn't have any knowledge mm. we we're working mm. in the dark mm. mostly mostly we didn't have all the the knowledge that yeah. is available today yeah. you know so we're doing things your own way our own way mm. and we're just happy with it and it was okay mm. it was it was it was it was you know out of that i got i wasn't doing anything else i was just doing music i got married i built my own house <laughs> I did everything, you know, so through that. I have my own family. And so so at least it's 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 worked, you know. And it still works. Do, do you remember the first salary you had through music? Being in production? I mean anything I, I, has to do with I, music. I, I, I can't remember. You know, because the the the, the, the denominations have changed. <laughs> you know, back then, you know, we had too many zeros. Yeah. You know, and today uh things have changed. So yeah. um what what you mentioned, the figures you mentioned now you can't even uh uh uh, put them together in, mm. in in terms of back then yeah you can't even imagine uh, but it was okay it it, it paid mm. it, it gave us uh some a decent life yeah some dec mm. some decent uh, life mm. to live mm. at least mm. all right H how did the setting up of title track productions um help establish the zap mallet's name and were there any individuals or groups who helped make it happen Oh, the, the, Zap, the Zap Mallet name has been there already. Mm -hmm. So the title track is just an add-on. That, 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 that's, that's just where it's like my office where I work from. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Zap Mallet name is, is there already. It's mm -hmm. even bigger than title track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Yes, yes. So the title track is just an outfit for mm -hmm. me to work from. That's all. That, any any uh, persons that helped, you know, oh, when no, you went no. to it back then, when you wanted to... No, no, no. I, I just started title track not too long not ago. Not too long ago. Back, <laughs> back in, this, in this millennium. Uh, because back then, uh, I was working from people's studios. I was working in people's studios. Mm. Uh, but I decided to, you know, have my own mm. setup uh, just recently, mm. uh, not too long ago. So you, 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 your first major recording project was with Tego Sisters, mm -hmm. right? Um, that was in the gospel side, mm -hmm. and then you did a few gospel artists and that. How did you transition from that field into working with, you know, uh, the then High Life artists, the yeah. Hip Life artists, and yeah. that? How did uh, you reach out to you? Remember the first uh, instance you yeah. had with Back then, with you know, um, then I, I, I had made up my mind. Then I was, I was you know, I was, I was uh, I'm, I'm into church a lot, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, I had made up my mind then that I was just going to do gospel. Mm. And obviously I started with gospel. But after a while I realized that it was if I was going to do gospel alone, mm. which I know some people do today, if I, if I was going to do that alone, it was going to just limit my, creati my creative yeah. um, stretch. So I decided to branch out into mm. other areas. Uh, that was when I, I started doing jingles and stuff for mm -hmm. Joy FM. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started and I went with Rexuma. Uh, on his, uh, his his album, Kutusa album, mm -hmm. I went with Rezuma. Then Reggie Rockstone came in and other people started tripping in. And they realized that, oh, okay, this guy has okay, what yeah. it takes. So That's so when it just popped off. Then, then they just sparked off. It That's just, when you got busy. Then the rest is history. <laughs> the rest they say is history. <laughs> Can you name the best artist or group you've, you've ever worked with? Oh. Would it be fair to, to me? No, I don't think it would be fair. I'll be think, fair, right? I think, I, I, I'll rather describe the describe best. Describe okay. The best. Okay. I, I won't mention names, but mm -hmm. the, the, the best artists I've worked with are people who don't give, mm. who allow me to use my, mm. my, my creativity. You know, there are some people who, who um, by their own doing, sometimes they don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not that they know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come into the studio, they don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. So they come into the studio with a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. Uh, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, and so they distract you a lot. But those those who don't distract me are those who get the best out of me. Mm. Simple as that. Mm. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did, did you at any point envision that hip life was was going to survive through the time? I mean, when it came, mm -hmm. it was something that was new. Mm -hmm. um, were you super convinced in the beginning that it was going to survive, or it had to take time? Uh, with the work that people were putting in for you to know, okay, this is actually a genre that's going to stay? Uh, you, you know, uh, Rev, 
one thing I believe is when you're doing something, you just do it with your heart and follow mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might not even know the result. Mm -hmm. For me, as a person, as a person involved in this mm -hmm. life thing, I didn't even think it was going to reach that far. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't thinking about it, it reaching where it has reached. But mm -hmm. all I was thinking about was how much I was going to put into it. And that was, that was my yeah. main focus. It wasn't about where it was going to reach. I wasn't thinking about how much I was mm -hmm. going to earn, mm -hmm. whether I was mm -hmm. going to buy a Rolls Royce or a Bentley True. out of that. No, I was looking at how much I was going to put into the hip life to be to remain as it is as it is today mm -hmm. that's i was that's yeah, what i was looking mm -hmm. for so my focus was in 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 um, in developing it production wise mm -hmm. yes that the, the story of you know hip life has been told time and time again <laughs> but uh, yes it's always i mean refreshing hearing it from the man who actually recorded and mixed the first sounds you know when it comes to hip life mm -hmm. tell us especially about the challenges or the challenge of trying to achieve perfection in order to get the public to accept high uh, uh, sorry hip life when it came how how were people reacting to it what kind of efforts did you guys have to put in to ensure that people know okay this is here to stay i mean for radio play commercial play and all that well, for radio play, commercial play, I wasn't so much involved, involved in, in that. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, 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 had to, uh, that had a lot to do with Radio Rockstone and the father, Ricky Osei, mm -hmm. the late Ricky Osei. Mm -hmm. May he rest in peace. And, and Rab, the, the American, the New York producer. Rab Bakari. Rab Bakari, yeah. Rab Bakari, yeah. So they were, they were mainly, you know, uh, in charge of that mm -hmm. aspect. Uh, so I, wasn't, I, I was concentrating on them, make, make, make sure that any time they came, I was yeah. going to give them... Yeah what they wanted you know because rap came with a new york edge yeah he came with a hip-hop mm -hmm. new york edge and i came with the um african edge so we we, you we fused hit it, it. Yes. yeah so we hit it together yeah i go yeah. your boy yeah and now life a crap by reggie rockstone and then uh you know were huge hits you know uh, keep your eyes on keep the your road. eyes on the road yeah i yeah. sang that but the backing vocals oh instead. you did yes a lot of people don't know but i did wow yes and you know what to do, bro. And, and your favorite song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, that song. Yeah. I did the backing vocals. Wow. Yeah. No, so then you be artists on your own, <laughs> on the side. No, I try, I try. Wow. <laughs> so all these songs are huge hits, uh, you know, on the local scene, then mm. due to its novelty. Uh, did it put some amount of uh, pressure on you in terms of expectations from the public and music industry? I mean, when you did all these songs, mm -hmm. things were obviously popping off. People were coming in for you. Did it exert a lot of pressure on you? Yes, yes, it will. It will. Suddenly, you have all kinds of people coming to mm. you. Some who don't even have anything mm. in terms of uh, songs, mm. they'll come with you with some lame songs, and they expect you to just just transform it, just for transform them. it, and turn them into Hits. into something, you know, and and becomes too much. Sometimes mm. it, you, you don't even have uh, as a human being, you are drained, mm. you are drained because there's so much that sometimes you get a song and mm. you are listening to a song, you are working on a song, and it doesn't even drive you, mm. Mm. but you have to. Put in your best. You have to drain yourself. You have to milk yourself to the mm. to the highest and and the guest and get the best out of it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm. As human beings, let's be frank and say mm. sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm. So it's not like I've made everything I did was a hit. You know, mm. some have fallen in water <laughs> because it's all, we are human beings. It's normal. I won't lie to you and tell you that everything. It's all rosy, mm -hmm. you know, with it. I like that. <laughs> if you were to put down names, I mean, of three artists, just three, um, that gave hip life roots here in Ghana, who would they be? Oh, just please. Names. I mean, um, it goes without saying Reggie Rockstone. <laughs> <by himself. laughs> Reggie Rockstone? Yes, two, uh, Lord Kenya. Lord Kenya. And then three, uh, I would say Obrafo. Obrafo. Yes, these are the people. It's fair to say these yes. are the grandpapas yes. of hip yes. life. And then, and then we have people like um, X Do. All coming in, yeah, coming in, and you know, so and Achami, Achami coming in. Yeah, so, yeah. so that, so the push was there. The push just came mm. from 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 all kinds of angles. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Now, those who so, who actually oppose the new genre uh, then express a concern it may affect the progression and development of high life, mm -hmm. the genre mm -hmm. itself. Uh, looking back now, I mean, uh, do you think this fusion has helped to project our music better than it was? Thought initially, uh -huh. you see, this is this is one problem I have in Ghana. Mm -hmm. When we have a new genre, mm -hmm. then we start to neglect or we start to ignore the old, the ones, previous ones, the previous mm -hmm. ones. But that is not right. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For me, for me as as a producer, the idea of bringing hip life was not to exchange hip life mm -hmm. with high life. No way. It was just to add a genre to all the other genres that we have. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. 
to make it to 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 open a game up for everybody to enjoy it yeah. wasn't to replace something else yeah. but today what i see is that as soon as there is a new genre then the old genre is put down mm -hmm. you understand but because a place like reg uh, like jamaica mm -hmm. up to now they still play reggae true we have young cats still playing reggae mm. like chronics christopher martin uh name them Taras riley this is they are playing reggae that's what yeah. Mali them used to play them up to today mm. you understand what i'm saying and the new crop the new cats who are doing the dance the dance or two is still there it's which still is the there, they've not neglected and, but they have mm. been neglected yes what 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 gave birth to the dance hall they haven't neglected it because mm. it was reggae reggae that gave birth to the dance hall mm. so what gave birth to the dance hall they haven't neglected it they are still maintaining but it. here the but here different. as soon as we have a new oh then a chain, oh, a chain, a chain, a chain, a chain, a chain, a chain, a chain. And, and, and it goes so it's like at the end of the day we don't even have um uh uh there, there, there is there is no uh what do I say? <laughs> Longe the longevity. Yeah. Her life is always suffering. Our, our music is always suffering. Our music, where hip life came from, hip life came from high life. Mm. Every mm. everything else comes from high life, mm. but we neglect the high life itself that gave us life. We're always mm. neglecting it mm. and doing other things. Today is mm. dancehall, as if dancehall was born in Ghana, mm -hmm. but we've taken it, and like we are always. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't do, that, do dancehall. Me, I like dancehall, but uh, trust me, uh, when I hear dancehall. I like to listen, not Ghanaian dance or okay. anyway. <laughs> I like to hear original Jamaican original dance. dance song. Song, yeah. I love it. Mm. And me, when I'm listening to music, Rev, I listen to music because I want to learn. Yeah. I'm learning. I hear sounds. I you break the sounds oh, down. Yes, I break the sounds You're down. You're judging it. Yes, I judge it. I, I put it together. I mm. analyze. Mm. Why did they have mm. to use this? But when I'm listening to ours, I don't get anything like that from it. Why? They just throw things together and just play. But, you know, uh, experienced producers, Experienced producers will sit down and plan mm. their production. But here, it's like the thing has been done already, so come mm. and just rap on it and then let's go. In three hours, a song is done. Mm. A whole song is done in three hours. So what do you expect, you know? But when you're listening to products from outside, there's a lot I can learn yeah. from it. And so I, I listen to that. So I'm not saying that nobody should do it. Yeah. Every, if, if, if you want to do Chinese music, we do should it. do it. But I'm not saying that we should, because of that, we should neglect Ours. No. So do you think that's the reason why outside, I mean, when conversations are around music, even mm -hmm. in here, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say our music doesn't have an identity because we neglect the ones that are ours. Yes, so we are ours. not. Rev, have you, you've noticed that we are not consistent with mm -hmm. our music. Mm -hmm. Reggae has remained consistent to today. Yeah. Her life hasn't been. And it sells consistent. Jamaica. That is what Jamaica is known for. Exactly. Mm. How many, uh, what's the Jamaica population? What's the population of the whole Jamaica? Well, it's not quite five million. But they have so many people in there. Look at even their athletes. Mm. 3.5 million people or so 4 million people, but still the kind of athletes they turn out. Yeah. They have the fastest uh, women, the fastest, fastest men. men. But we over 30 million, we don't have even one fast, one fast thief, excuse me to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we, we just need to be consistent. Exactly, we uh, just need to be consistent. When We're you mentioned consistent. South African, I mean, you are a producer. Kwaito comes Kwaito in. Kwaito comes in, you know, uh, and, yes. and, and you know, uh, 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 and you don't, it doesn't mean that they've neglected their jive town music. No, they have they this, their jive town music yeah, that they still yeah, play. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and stuff like that. These are my pianos and the rest are all birth, you know, they're all uh, from exactly, exactly. quite to obey yeah. their sounds. I but mean, we, we tend to, we are not consistent. With why, why? We, the we, why is what we, I want to find how out. Hip life, do, look at when we came up with a point, at a point somebody was even singing that hip life was even dead. Mm. It, it, became, it became a song. We cleaned mm. the game. Mm. We've killed the hip life and, and stuff like that. So 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 usually we are not consistent with mm. the music. We hip life came and all of a sudden hip life went to Jama. It changed to Jama. It transitioned to Jama. From Jama, it transitioned to yeah. Azonto. From Azonto, it has transitioned to uh, trap. From trap it has transitioned to dance. We don't know what and so doing. and so if I'm not that's why somebody not calls wrong. us inconsistent and <laughs> confused. <laughs> so it's wait. not just one artist, the whole industry. Hold on. Hold on, hold on to that. So, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. you mean we should keep the, the mother genre there? Yes. And have new ones coming, but we should not, there shouldn't be a transition, it shouldn't be a transition as no, in no, we're moving. No, no, it shouldn't be a replacement yeah. like we have replaced it. No, 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 no. Transition is changing from one form to the other. It's but then a, growth or trends. moving up means exactly, trends means something can be born out of it, but yes. it should not change but the original state. It shouldn't state. change the original. Okay. It shouldn't change original. I mean, mankind has remained mankind. So the, the principal genre should stay yes. intact. 
we we change people change people are getting uh, people are doing people are transitioning from uh, from americans to uh, chinese people are changing themselves mm -hmm. doing sex change mm -hmm. but the human being is still there mm -hmm. what god created is still there. there so that's it's how like you can be. change yourself from, from a snake to a crocodile, nobody cares. But you're still human. But you're still human. The mm. human being is still there. Mm. Yeah. I, I perfectly understand you now. Mm. Uh, apart from the influence, uh, I mean, hip life has had on uh, millennials. Mm -hmm. What else about it, okay? Now when you sit back to look at it, what about it fills your heart with pride as one of the originators? And um, if there, are there any regrets, you know, in the line? Things maybe you think... Uh, could have been better things maybe you guys did in the past i see you guys because it was like a whole click yeah 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 the, the, probably the only the only thing that you know the regrets is probably the, the business side of it mm -hmm. we weren't concentrating on the business side mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. we we're just uh, happy with, with the, the, the show artist. business bit, the eh? show. Mm -hmm. not the business the show the show, the show itself we're just okay. looking at the show because it's show business business okay music business mm -hmm. we we're just looking at the show We've, we neglected the business, mm. so we're just doing things like a producer. For me, I was just recording people, and then I, I wasn't for the fun of it. Yeah, I wasn't goes and thinking then, okay. about royalties. Mm. I, I never even thought about royalties mm. back then, but today things have changed, and you know we are getting the light in terms of. Uh, for someone like you, is it because you didn't know about royalties, or you knew but you didn't think it would be um, something effective in our system? Because you I, have I trouble. Knew, I, I knew, I knew, but I didn't know how it was going to work. Okay. I didn't know. And sometimes, even uh, because it was so, it was so much of a novelty. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes demanding it becomes an issue. Mm. You become too new mm. at that time. Mm. You become too new. You are even uh, blackballed, and that's it. You can't even work with anybody because oh, this guy when you go there, he will tell you say they want this, they want that, you know that kind of thing. So, uh, so you are even scared to even demand what you are supposed to demand mm. back then because the knowledge was not there. Yeah. It was basically not there. Yeah. Uh -huh. But today things are changing. People are now understanding that, oh, okay, so now if I take Reverend Eskin's music, I have to pay. Yeah. You know, back then, nobody cares. We were just recording from cassette to cassette, free, f free like that. I remember, just having fun with it. Yeah, I remember in London, I, I was working with a, an engineer, a, a studio owner, and he had a CD I wanted to record on cassette. Mm. He had a, a CD I liked, you know, selection of songs I wanted to record on cassette. He told me he would not let me record. <laughs> he told me he wouldn't let me record it. He, he, I, I insisted. He also insisted. He resisted. Uh -huh. he, he didn't let me record. And finally, after coaxing him for a long time and trying to, you know, uh, uh, con him with some food and stuff, with a word? Food. <laughs> you can, can you imagine bribing wow. a wife from the food? And he eventually gave in because that was the last day we mm -hmm. were actually using his studio mm -hmm. and we were about to leave. Yeah. So he gave in. He said, and you know the word he used? No. He said, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and record that cassette, you pirate. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that people who were rude back then or what? No, 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 no. He's telling you what you're not supposed to I mean, you know, you're not, uh, he, was very, he was just being. Blunt. Jovial, yeah, but I was blunt. Okay. He was jovial. He laughed when he said it. Okay, but he told me the truth. So you see, they understand it. Here we don't. Mm. Back then we didn't. Mm. But there they understood it. Mm. But here we didn't. So Zab, Zab we'll let's have. be let's be blunt mm -hmm. on this particular one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are of the opinion that we don't have a music industry in comparison, uh, you know, to what existed before. Or what is this in other, you know, music settings in other countries? Yes. Are you of the same opinion? Yes, uh, I am. I am. You, you because, do? Uh, yes, because uh, you see, there are certain things that have to operate in an industry, mm. and do we have them operating? For instance, when you, we don't have songwriters, we, we don't. Have, we, I know I, we have a few. We have songwriters. Okay. But when I'm talking about songwriters, I'm talking about a pool of songwriters. A pool of them. Okay. Right now, if you want a song, where can you go and get a song? I'll go to the beach and then get inspiration. <laughs> But in a well-prepared industry, yeah, we're supposed to have a pool of songwriters. You just go to a place where you can, mm. or a set of publishers. Mm -hmm. The publishers who have songs, they'll tell you that, oh, Rev, I have mm. this song. You can listen to it. You can try it. They come around even to shop songs to artists mm. and stuff like that. Mm. But we don't have any here. Things like that. Uh, uh, our marketing system, we, mm. we don't have data. Mm. We don't even uh, collect data for 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 our songs and. And, and stuff like that. So so the industry is not really properly uh, built. Is it that we don't have modeled 
sectors in our system like i think so more like mm -hmm. more like it i think if if we start uh, developing those models mm -hmm. it will work like we have uh, some uh, some uh, publishers i don't think we have publishers in ghana do you know of any publisher in ghana well, people, just claim they, they, well, people just claim they are they are they are they are Publish. Everybody publishes it. I know a company. Uh, now, now, as long as you, you make your music, you are you are your own publisher. Okay. Yes, but we don't have established publishing um, setup where we can say, mm -hmm. "I am going to this group. Of, I am going to this industry. I am going to look for this from mm -hmm. here. I am going to look for a publishing deal. I am mm -hmm. going to look." We don't have things like that. Mm -hmm. For instance, when it comes to like entertainment law, do you have any lawyer who represents any? The, we are, do, I, do I have any entertainment lawyer in Ghana? I don't think we I, do. I think there's, there's Cynthia Kwaku. I know a few of them. Well, just a few. A few. When? Since when? Well, just in this millennia. Yeah. So back then, we didn't have. Back then, have. you didn't have. We okay. didn't have. Mm. You know, so so it's now that things are just mm. gradually, mm. gradually, I didn't, I just hope yeah. that eventually we'll get there. Yeah. You know, and build the structures very well. About getting there and building the structures, I mean, you've been around for more than two decades. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, what model of an industry will you prescribe, taking into consideration our unique situation and settings? <laughs> uh, the solutions, now more about yeah, the solutions. Yeah, I think, I think we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel there is there already. Um, people started this um, copyright stuff and the, the, business, as mm -hmm. the business aspect mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. way back in the... 19th century. Mm -hmm. The French started this in 1860 something mm -hmm. or 1890 something, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the late, the last in the among the developed countries, the last to have started copyright was America. If you, in the 19 in 1920 something, they started. So you see that over the years they have helped build it. And back then when they started, they didn't have it easy there too. They didn't have it easy. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how even this thing started in France. There was a guy who went to eat in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, they didn't have sound system. Bands were playing live music. In the restaurant, yeah. So he went into the restaurant with his friend to eat. And when they went to eat, there was a, uh, there was a band playing music there live. And the band played one of his songs. So after eating, he got up and asked. And they asked him the bill. And he said, did the band pay for the song that he was that they played. They didn't know it was they his song. They didn't know right? it was his song. Then he told them, he hope he, he introduced himself, that I, did, I wrote this, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And so he didn't pay. He didn't pay for the, for the food. And of course, they gave him the opportunity. And, and, and it became a, a distance. So all these things de developed mm. into now, mm. pay me to use my music. Mm. Pay me to, to use my music developed thing. And it has gone on for years. But we are now starting ours in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Back in this millennium, which I, after this 2000, we started. So it's going to take, obviously, it's going to take a lot of time for people to even grasp it. Yeah. Because, like, uh, let me give you an example, a, a typical instance. You see, like, um, like car license and uh, road wedding. Mm -hmm. you, the, you were born before they came, they were instituted. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes. yes. You were instituted before you were born. Yes. So you now, you know that you have to, uh, you have, to have it yes. on your car. It's Otherwise, required, yeah. Yes, it's required. You know, you know it's a standard requirement. Mm -hmm. Very good. What, what would have happened if all of a sudden there was no traffic or there was no license required of you and all of a sudden the government comes and actually, now everybody should uh, have a license to drive. What's going to happen? It's going to be a change that people, yeah, people are going to be like ah now exactly. but now you are going to ask me. so the same thing is with music mm -hmm. now after after using gun, um, or music for free all this while mm -hmm. you are now come to tell me to pay for it mm -hmm. it's going to be something else yeah. so it's going to take a, a while for people to understand mm -hmm. that look people need to pay for the music they use people need to pay for 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 uh, uh, intellectual property. That is a basic thing. It's not just using the music. Mm -hmm. It's paying for intellectual property. Mm. Whether music, whether book, whether film or whatever. It's intellectual property. People have to understand that. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, a lot of stakeholders also, you know, have proposed that uh, there's a need for government to support, you know, the creative arts industry. Mm -hmm. um, well, a few have indicated what exactly the sector needs. Uh, based on uh, a need assessment, you know, mm -hmm maybe probably might have done what do you think must be prioritized in order to speed up the process of having the government put its hand into our creative arts industry i mean there's a there's a ministry created for that mm -hmm. but then how actively can they get involved in changing the face of our creative art, arts industry here in ghana what's the first thing you think they must uh, well attend to 
Um, first of all, I think we, we ourselves need to attend to ourselves. <laughs> yes, I think because the, the, the industry is too fragmented. Okay. We need to put the industry together. Together. Um, for instance, if I, I have this um, uh, situation usually mm -hmm. where we tend to be, we tend to badmouth people mm -hmm. a lot in this industry. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, oh, I do go work with SK, you know, Reverend SK, Reverend SK, never go work with yeah. I know, give you, you know, be our, be our guy. Be our guy. You know, that kind of, that, that kind of bad mouth. And that's why I keep saying that, look, if we are going to fix the country mm. and we are not going to fix our attitude, mm. we are going to mess up the country if it's, fixed, if it's fixed. Because amongst ourselves, we are killing ourselves. We ourselves, amongst ourselves as musicians. In the creative arts industry, as right? Creative, as creative arts people, we keep killing ourselves. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? We are not, we are too fragmented. The animosity, and things are, are so. I think we, we ourselves need to. It's, it's a, so it's a case of unity, right? Yes, we need to defragment. We need a united front. Yes, you yes. know when you are a comp computer, they will tell you that you have to defragment, yeah, defragmentize. Yeah. Mm. Yes, we need to defragment, mm. defragmentize the industry. We need to 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 bunch up. We need we need to have a united front, calling for one thing and one thing only, and from one from one and move to on to this to the next move from one to the next uh, but as to what we need to prioritize i can't really you can't really i don't really it. even know the things i have been outlined mm. or itemized to be re prioritized mm. but um obviously uh, i think our attitude needs to start first well we need to start working on our attitude first before anything else. from your side i mean you are off the production side mm -hmm. right record production mm -hmm. in recent times we've had um, a lot of uh, misunderstandings. I mean, open arguments between producers and then uh, artists. Mm -hmm. These guys are supposed to be working together, but it looks like there's a lot of disconnect in that. That is my problem. You see, those are the things I'm talking about. Yes, and so with that, I mean, since you don't really know the, the, the steps outlined for the creative arts industry on, on, a, on a larger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, scale, maybe your side, you might have a little bit of info on there. What do you think should be done to bring about a little bit more unity in the production side you mentioned we have in a pool of mm -hmm. uh, songwriters mm -hmm. do we even have a pool of producers sound sound producers engineers here in ghana is there any collation like that well well there, there is there is uh, we mm -hmm. have some uh, there's, there's a group that they, mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's a, it's a whatsapp group and a facebook group mm -hmm. and they are on and they they i don't know what they talk about well, actually I'm, I'm not on there because i like to remain myself i like to be a bit uh, i like to remain by myself for, for you know having been born in an only child so <laughs> i like to remain by myself most of the time but um you're I, a I one-man person yes but but i okay. think the you know they they are working on a few things mm -hmm. you know especially like things like split sheet which i hadn't worked on before mm -hmm. when i was doing all the production mm -hmm. all these years i hadn't worked on before but today i'm if, i'm even advocating that we worked on the split sheet between the artist and the producer, which I wanted to, I, I had wanted to introduce back then in 2012 or so mm -hmm. when I was on the Gamro board, mm -hmm. but it wasn't paid attention. Nobody paid, paid attention, attention to it, to it. Mm. so it fell under water. But now we are trying to get used. To, we are trying to, it's, it's, we are trying to institute it so that before the song even comes out of the studio, mm -hmm. we have a data of of the song itself before between the producer and the and the artist mm -hmm. before it even goes out. So those are the things that we, you know, we're, we're looking at, and gradually we'll get there. We'll get there. Zap, how vital, in your opinion, is the synergy between music and tourism, and how have we failed to build this connection for the growth of the music industry? Um, earlier, you mentioned reggae. You know, definitely attributes uh, a, a lot of, you know, response to Jamaica. Yeah. It, it carries the name Jamaica at exactly, its back. Exactly. Um, do you th yes. Do you think yes. we, we haven't done enough we as a country? We, we haven't. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, you see, uh, I, I had the opportunity of listening to a BBC interview some mm -hmm. years back. Mm -hmm. And one guy was, uh, they were asking about, they were talking about tourism. I think in Barbados or Bahamas, one of the big countries in, mm -hmm. the, in the Caribbean, they were asking one guy, that um, I think they, they, they were talking about the fact that uh, tourism was dropping for that country, for that area, for, mm -hmm. for a while. Tourism yeah. was dropping. And they asked one, I, I don't know who, I can't remember who it was, but he said they realized that one of the reasons why tourism was dropping was because they were changing their style of music. Mm. Because one of the reasons why was that they had changed, they were, their, 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 their generation coming was changing their style of music. Because 
if the, the toys is coming, he's coming to listen to your style of music. Mm -hmm. If he wants to listen to Beyonce or Beyonce style of music, or Jay-Z or Bujibanti, I'll go to Jamaica, I'll go to America. But if I'm coming to Ghana, then I want to come and listen to your, your kind of music. You understand what I'm saying? I think even beyond that, I mean, the, the music itself can even be a pull factor. Exactly. For So even if they don't get to hear it here, I mean, I'm hearing a Shatawali song in 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 in, in let's say iceland right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i hear so much of it i love it so much i start you know researching on who he is mm -hmm. where he's from mm -hmm. the name ghana may pop up mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i think it's even on that side it's very important i mean we push the songs out because music travels faster mm -hmm. than a lot of things if you have uh, a bunch of let's say athletes going out these ones will definitely sell the country but if they spend eight hours or let's say 24 hours on a flight to get to a, a country, music will get there faster. Yes, yes. And if we're to export... Yeah, for, for instance, a tourist coming to country, into Ghana will not Google and find out our GDP. Mm. He's not going to Google the, our mm. finance, uh, Ministry of Finance or Ministry of Energy to find out anything. What he's going to find out is the music. Mm. They use music and movies. Mm. What has made America what it is today? What has made America what it is today? I think the music and, it's and music Hollywood. and movies. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Movies, yeah. Music and Hollywood. Yeah, and Nigeria so, too. Nigeria yeah. too. Nigeria is using music and mm. and, uh, and 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 the movies to rebrand Nigeria. Mm. Apart from uh, no, now from every negative uh, emotion that people had about Nigeria, they are trying to rebrand it with music and 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 and, and, the, and the arts, which we need to do. That's how we are going to transform. Ghana tourism. Mm. We, we can transform Ghana tourism with music, with and, music arts. and arts. Mm. Trust me, our movies, our movies. When we change creators, when we have high quality, we have to just put in also the quality, mm. the, the quality to match up with things like uh, Netflix and stuff like yeah. that. Not just be doing things haphazardly and just mm. thinking that oh, because Ghanaians like it, everybody should like it. Some things, a lot of things are accepted in Ghana, which mm. don't cross mm. even mm. to go border Afro. <laughs> so yeah, yeah two more things i want us to talk about so uh back then there was the ecrag awards mm -hmm. now yeah, there's yeah. the gmas and a, pro a proliferation of others a lot of awards. Love awards yeah in your opinion what should be the core objective of music award events um is it to reward uh hard work or create healthy rivalries uh, people me, say I the competition is very important I don't think I don't see I don't see music as a competition. Okay. Music is not a competition. Music is an art. Mm. Football is a competition. Mm. Wrestling is competition. Boxing mm. is competition. Mm. Athletics is competition. Music is an art. I'm a collaborator. We are collaborators. We are mm. not competitors. Mm. So if I'm doing reggae and you are doing jazz, we just move on. It is it is it's the same thing we are doing, but we are doing it from different directions. But we are doing the same thing. So I don't see why we should put competition in music. We could be doing the same thing, dance hall, yes. We could be, we, we could call, call ourselves rivals or whatever, but at the same time, we are doing the same thing. We are, we are, we are running towards the same end. Mm. So for me, I don't see, it's, 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 only, it's only in Ghana that we see music as a competition, but music is not supposed to be competition. Um, I, I, Art is not competition. And the award shows, the ones? That, uh, that, that's my problem. The awards, award, shows, award shows are just meant to be what they are. They are just mm. award shows. Mm. So, so what hard work is meant it? to does it well in your opinion let me throw it back to you <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think we in 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 the course of we doing all this we've rewarded hard work and, so and it, not is, created is, is, is the, the, the awards is it to reward just hard work or to reward in my opinion yes hard work hard work and excellence um I mean, based on the level of work you I put in, your I numbers I was, I was, I was for excellence and usually I don't think for me is right uh, they are not they are not excellent they are they are popularity awards mm. mostly it's, it's who made more 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 noise in the year who we heard more noise or, or who yeah, heard but, but some go beyond that i mean beyond streams that. that people are getting the number of oh, we know you uh, and i know people even can buy streams what are you talking about we can buy streams right it's all part of the hardware because mm. i've got more money i can you know you know you know you and i know what i'm talking about so let's let's 
Let's not kid ourselves. We so, if, so if we're moving forward as a country, I mean, today I love the fact that whenever we bring something up, we talk about the progress bit. <laughs> if we're going to move forward, do you think it should be a, a, a scheme or Is awards? It, awards shows awards, are supposed awards. to reward hard work. Schemes like that are mm. left to experts. Okay. You see, when Corona came, we mm. left it to the experts to decide for us mm. what lockdown what lockdown means. Well, so if it gets to music and you want me to, to, to you want the music to remain at a certain level, leave it to the experts to maintain. The level but when you open it out to the public as for the public they, they can go for anything mm. and so you, you 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 are of the opinion that we should leave it to the aspect so the aspects you have a hundred percent stake in awarding grammys, do you vote for grammys do you no. test for grammys no no do you test for american music awards even BET, you don't mm -mm. Do you I think they have the they have the public uh, the viewers choice bit okay, where but for, for the grammys do they have no no, no. Well, some awards usually, but but ours here is a different story. So, but where are the people consuming the music? Where are mm -hmm. people enjoying these mm -hmm. creative arts, you know, personalities? Yes, so, if so, we that's, what, so that's what I'm saying. So why don't you just maintain it at the popular level? Mm -hmm. Not the excellence level, the popular so level. Now it, it should be so, popularity. So that, yes, popularity. That, that, that one, mm -hmm. we under, then we understand, okay, this guy was more, okay, this guy made more noise. And, okay, mm -hmm. then that, that is understood. Mm -hmm. Then we know that for sure. Mm -hmm. But when you tell me that this guy's music was better than that guy, mm. how? And, 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 and it was not decided by the experts, but the but, people. But, but the people who and are not his, experts. And, and his people as mm. well. Because if I'm, I'm an artist, yes. And by his people, because if I'm an artist and I've got money, I can buy more, more, more credits and text more and make and win. Are they lying? Tell me if I'm not lying. You're not lying. Uh -huh. So please. Wow. Let's, yeah. It, it, for me, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with, with all, yeah. any of the awards. Mm. No. But let's just name it as we should reshape things, right? Yes. It should mm. just be named as it's supposed to be named. Mm. That's all. Mm. If it's not an excellence awards, fine. Mm. Let's call it what it is and just enjoy it as it is. For me, yeah. I enjoy the VDMA so I enjoy mm. it so much. But I, I, I just don't take it. I just take it as one of the. It's a glamorous, mm. blissful event for Ghana. It's the biggest event. Mm. I love it and everything. But. When it comes, I don't think so. I find it very, very funny when people take it to heart and I'm supposed to win and I didn't win and I'm supposed to even being nominated is even an honor. Mm. Nomination cry is an honor, la to the extent that if <laughs> oh, yeah, if, if in America, if you're even nominated for Oscar, your price goes high. Mm. I like, yeah, true, yes. We'll get there. For instance, Nora Jones. Nora Jones, mm. some years back, she won eight Grammys mm -hmm. for what? That some song, some piano song. And I was like, ah, how come? But the thing is that as soon as Nora Jones won the Grammys, mm -hmm. uh, she, she had those Grammys, her sales doubled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brand and yeah, Exactly. <laughs> but you see, the Grammys are not determined by text messages, uh, 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 text uh, voters, mm. that are determined by experts. Mm. So it, it, it places some premium on... So, so if we were to look at a, a country, a certain like Ghana, mm -hmm. what criteria um, should we use in determining who is the expert? Oh, you know. You know, tell you me know, you know what? You know what? <laughs> uh, uh, Reverend Esky. Zav. You know something? <laughs> uh, I was discussing some things with some guys, and uh -huh. you know what they told me? They told me, say, if, if you play good song, mm -hmm. that means that they know what is nyumpa, okay. and know what is nyumfu. Okay. So you know the right person. Go, go for him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, the other time, this reverend minister was on TV, mm -hmm. castigating all over social media, castigating the fact that Ghanaian um, administrators and and, account, and people, when you hide them, they'll, they'll destroy your business and mm -hmm. stuff for you. But that's why they hide Indians and so on and so forth. And I refuted. I said that is not wrong. This is right. It's not right. It's very wrong. Mm. Because it means that you didn't look for the right Ghanaian to manage your yes, business. Right don't, don't sit down and generalize that that's how Ghanaians mm. are. It's wrong. If you're looking for the right people, you will you find, find them. them. We don't find the right people. We always go for the wrong people. Square pegs in one hole. That's a syndrome wrong with this country. Mm. And if we, do, if we don't deal with it, we will we'll not get anywhere. Square pegs in one hole. We know our problems. Let's we deal with it. We know. 0202 At this point, I will take questions from uh, you. If you're at home, you're locked in now, you have any questions. I might take just two. Uh, just two. Uh, no, 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 no. We'll keep it clean for you, yeah? Well, 51 after 10. Chance going out to Calbank MTN. And of course, Chocomore by Casa Preco.
Wiley the Boat TV. Zap, if you're not doing music, um, if you're not busy at the office, uh, staying with the family, what are you doing? I mean, what do you do for fun? Sorry. Uh, I, I I like watching movies. I'm, like I'm, 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 I'm more into the arts, so I like watching movies. You like watching movies, right? Yeah, okay. I like watching movies a lot. What are your, your favorite movies now? Um, give me two Ghanaian movies, uh, two American movies. Um, I can't mention the movie, but you I can't mention, mention the actors. Uh, I like seeing. Okay, I like seeing. Favorite? I like seeing that that, that that chap called Lil Wayne. I like seeing. Him. He makes me <laughs> laugh. Kanza Lowe. Yeah, Kojon Kanza Lowe. Okay. He makes me laugh a lot. Wow. I like seeing. Like, I like seeing Akrobeto. Akrobeto. Uh, yeah. Nana Mama Brown is my favorite. Your favorite actress, right? She's my. Fi- I love her. Phenomenal actress. actress. Yeah. Um, uh, Abruci. Kevin Hart. <laughs> you just like. You just like the comedy bit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe and the action, Dwayne yeah, Johnson, yeah. Uh, The Rock, Liam Neeson. Mm. You know, yeah, those are some of my favorite actors. Okay. So l- let's talk about family. Um, ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I- I've been told you have um, daughters, right? Yes. yes. Two, uh, two long daughters. Two, yes, two daughters. How is life like being a family man? Um, how different is it from being the the man we know in our industry? Uh, you know, family man, everybody looks up to you. Mm-hmm. You are the major. Mm-hmm. You are the you are the commander. You are mm-hmm. the commander in chief. Mm-hmm. You are the CEO. Everybody's looking up to you, so you have to be there mm-hmm. for everybody. You know, when they are crying, when they are happy, you have to be there. So it's 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 not easy. You know, but it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of hard work mm-hmm. and fun. fun it's, yeah. it's fun while yeah. we are doing it. Yes. What are some of the lessons parenthood has taught you? In life, you know, about no, your general outlook. Yes, in life. Uh, people change. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you have your child, you have your child like that. You know, you, you take out the child, you hold the child. When the child poops or vomits, you clean it. You clean it. You go in you know, the oh, you poop, you clean the ass. Excuse my my, yeah. my my Chinese. You clean the butt and everything. But after a while, you realize that now today I can't enter my daughter's room anymore. <laughs> I can't. I just can't. Hey, suddenly, life, you know, all of a sudden, you can't yeah, enter your yeah, daughter's yeah. room. Mm. I don't even attempt even yeah. going near their door because I realize that right now we are we are miles of fire apart. Yeah, yeah. mm. So you know, it, it happens like that. Those are the things mm. in life you have to accept. You have to accept them. Yes. Any of them taken uh, after you? Oh yes, yes, yes. The, the first one. Okay. The first one. She's into movies and she's crazy about movies. Mm. She went to the university. We, we we took her to the US to study in the university. She came back. She's, She's completed. She's had a degree and everything, but she said this is what she wants to do. So she's into movies now. And I was, I was not. I was objecting, actually. You of all people? Uh, or me of all people? Why? Because I know the terrain that we play. Okay. It's not easy. So I was objecting from the beginning. But her mom, who's rather a banker, who rather was, uh, who's rather a banker, yeah. happy was rather yeah. be more supportive. So I had to give him. <laughs> I've had to it is me. what it is. Yes, it is what it is. It, it is said that in a room of 10 successful individuals, right, mm-hmm. um, the meaning of success will be different and perceived differently mm-hmm. uh, to each of them or by each of them. What is success to Zap Mallet? Your definition of success? Oh, success is when you made impact mm. and influence a lot of lives where people can talk of you, mention, like, mention hip life. Mm. We talk of Zap. Mm. Yes, it's success. Mm. Would you support and partake in a national initiative to help every child everywhere to learn um, how to play a music instrument? Why not? Why not? Why, I'll, I'll be very, very glad. Actually, um, very maybe made by, by the weekend, we'll be commissioning some mm. uh, recording studio at Accra Academy Okay, this coming weekend, uh, which I think it's m- maybe the first of its kind. Uh, recording studio mm-hmm. in the secondary school, mm-hmm. uh, senior senior high school, mm-hmm. uh, which I think uh, I would encourage other schools to to also emulate, mm-hmm. so that at least because music uh, plays a part. You know, we all know the the, the role music plays yeah. in our society, mm-hmm. and and how we use music to even to learn. We can even use music to teach. For instance, when you are teaching multi- multiplication tables, we use music in it, and we are using and a lot of things that we use music for. Mm-hmm. Music therapy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, I heard this lady, there's this lady, uh, so long, I forgot her name, she uses therapy to teach autistic children and stuff mm-hmm. like that, music mm-hmm. therapy. Yeah. And you know, we need more of these things. So I'll be very, very glad to, to be to, to be involved in these to things, involve, to, to involve myself in it. Zap, who are your favorite music producers in Ghana? The, right ca- the current wave of producers. Right now, oh, David J. Kewa. 
Kewa. Pastor Kewa. Pastor, yes, Prophet Kewa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Kuda. Kuda. Mm. Kuda. Yeah. Is it Kuda the artist? Kuda, the, the two. Oh, there's, there's another one. He's one, but yeah, he's, a, he's a producer as well. Oh, wow. Yes, the one. This is new, yeah. Yeah, he's a producer as well. Oh, bless him. Yeah. What, what about these two guys you love? Oh, they, they, they are mature. Okay. They are mature. There's maturity in what they do. Mm. Yeah. Do you ever have plans of uh, mentoring music producers? Why not? I have plans. I've been doing it in my own it. small way. Yes, I've been doing it in my own small way. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to deal with this current uh, generation, you know, the millennials. It's hard to deal with them sometimes, you know, but I, 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 do, I do my best. I have people coming to me, you know, sometimes they come, one of they just hit off and then they just go, yeah, but... Do you also support the opinion? I mean, there are a lot of people that believe our current wave of music producers are lazy um, because of how easy things are when it comes to... Not, not easy, let me not use the word easy. How fast-tracked things are now when it comes to producing sounds. Um, do you also believe they are lazy or uh, is as a result of how advanced technology is? Yeah, I, I think I think more, more uh, either of the two, one mm. of the two, I mean, or, or, or two, mm. you know, it, it's, it's either here or there. Uh, because the technology has made way or has mm. paved the way for, for easy things. For instance, things that I used to do back then, mm -hmm. I used to struggle and sweat to do. Mm. I, I don't do that you anymore. You can't do them no I more. I just tune in and dial in and mm -hmm. I get what I'm looking mm -hmm. for, you know. So... But at the end of the day, it is not so much of the technology. It is what you use with the, te mm. the technology. It's what you use the technology for. Mm. You can use the technology to kill. You can use it to, 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 to make life. You know, so you can use it to do bad music. You can use it to do terrible music. You can use it to do good music. So it's all a matter of creativity. And I just think that people are not just tapping into their creativity. They are just depending on the technology. So they don't tap into their creativity so much. You know, but I think um, when 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 we tax them, they, they should be able to do it. I, I don't think it should be a problem. Mm. Very soon, I'm, I'm sure. You see, um, some some of us still have imaginized for a long time. Some mm -hmm. of us, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. back then have imaginized. Well, if you allow us all to play in the same um, pool, you realize that we, we can, well, there's a lot we can also bring to the table. Are, are, are the new um, set of no new sets. The, the the millennial bit of our artists are they coming to you for work? Are they, no, are they no, bringing no, their projects no, to you? No, no, because it, because I will I will take my time. I I won't do your music in three hours. Mm. Right now, what I hear some people do music, a whole song, in three hours, and they are done with the music because the music has been produced, the beat has been produced already. They don't care. So so whatever you come to put on the on the on the music as an artist. They don't even just suppose it with the beat they have made to realize that okay this thing they go they go together or not mm -hmm. they just put it together and then off you go but for me i would analyze i would break down i would shake i will you know and a whole lot of it takes time mm -hmm. for me music is an art it is not a sport for me to run 100 meters in in 9.9.7 .9 seconds for me it's an art where i need to take my time mm -hmm. it's like i'm making love <laughs> yeah, you're making love. You need to take your time. You know, you don't. You don't just slam bam, slam bang, and then thank you, man. Then just walk off. No, you need to take finish. Your time and take your time. Talk to the, the person. Mm. You know, hey, buy some drink, some wine. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So I think uh, basically that's it. Uh, in recent times, we've had a lot of debates. I mean, across social media and the likes mm -hmm. um, on on who deserves to win Grammys out here in Ghana and the rest. I mean, just to pick your mind on it, do you think we should be splitting hairs over it? Should it be brother, a necessary I don't, I, I don't thing? Think, uh, I don't should think that validate necessary. our music as I don't a think, I don't think it's necessary. Mm. For me, I don't think it's necessary. Mm. When I was coming into this world, I didn't make any pact mm. with any angel mm. or any demon mm. or any god mm. that I was coming to win a Grammy. If I win, fine. If I don't, um, for me as an artist, or for me as an artist, I would advise every artist to please your crowd, please your fans. Mm. The Grammys will come. Those things, the Jesus said what? Seek ye first the kingdom. And God, all that has to be added to you. Pastors have malice. Yes, <laughs> seek ye first your art. Yeah. When you get it right, all yeah. other things will come to it. Mm. To it. All other thing, things, the accolades, the awards, everything will come to it. Mm. But if you're not doing your music right, you expect Grammys. 
when even what you are singing they don't understand mm -hmm. when the, the, the quality is not even there when your what you are playing is not even there the quality is not even right it's not even there mm. you are just joking two questions from our listeners and then we move on uh this one in here from ajikum inside achimota says rev ask zap um if it's necessary for our old artists to um do collaborations with the new artists would that help promote our music industry I think he, for the lack of better words. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Why not? You see, I don't think, you see, the fact that you are drinking uh, new uh, drinks today doesn't mean that Coca-Cola is, Coca -Cola is finished. Mm. There are other coolers coming, some other fake coolers coming, but we see that Coca-Cola is still around. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There are fake colors coming, but Coca-Cola is still around. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there are new artists doesn't mean that we should discard the old ones. Snoop is still doing music. Mm -hmm. But Saram just released, if mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay-Z is still and, doing And music. I think he has um, Diamond Platinum on you understand? Song, yeah. you, you understand what I'm saying? So I think, I think, you see, and for me, it opens the industry bigger. It makes the industry bigger. Such that if, if for instance, um, Rexuma is performing today. Mm -hmm. Rexuma is going to go with his band. Mm -hmm. And his band are going to clad themselves in outfit. He himself is going to clad himself in an outfit and all that. What is what is he doing? He's opening other avenues for other industries. Yeah. Somebody is going to sew the dresses for them, ain't it? Somebody they are going to uh, hire instruments. Somebody is going to make money from that. They are going to hire lights. Somebody is going to make money from that. They are going to hire stage. So you see, it helps the industry because we can't have only the new crops performing. It means that we are just limiting the industry. But if the old crops too are performing, it makes it wider. Every mm. everybody will get a share. Mm. At least if I'm not making money out of Reverend Eskin, I can make money out of maybe uh, uh, AB Crenshaw. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. So it makes it makes the the, the industry bigger. So so we shouldn't just limit it just to a few mm -hmm. crop of people. Mm -hmm. If you do that, we are we are not even seeking employment for other yeah. players because if Rexuma is going on stage, he's going on with a band. Mm -hmm. If Stoneboy is go also going on stage, he's going with a band. If uh, Shazawale is going to stay, he's going to the bank. And that creates employment for, for the musicians All also to benefit, for mm -hmm. everybody. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Zap, for spending time with us. Uh, finally, I want to ask from you any words of encouragement or inspiration to uh, or for young people, especially those with musical aspirations, are they working their way up? Uh, any words of encouragement to them, words of advice, things they should know? Mm -hmm. music, mu mu music, you see, music is a, is a bug. Mm. It's a bug when it bites you. Eh? It's, it's, it, it's not painful, mm. but it's very addictive. Mm. So you need to treat it with care. Mm. Just, just get to know the, uh, the, the, the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. Today, technology has opened us to a lot mm. of things. You can Google and you find a lot of things. You can YouTube and you find a lot of things. Mm. Learn as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Learn as much as you can. And don't, 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 don't uh, deny yourself from approaching anybody you think has gone ahead of you and you think can ask learn. for help you can ask for help but sometimes you I, I the other time i wrote on facebook i said you can learn from the false you can learn from the from the true mm. you can learn from the fake you can learn from the real learn as much as you can mm. learn from the old learn from the young mm. don't stop learning just keep learning just keep learning thank you so That's much zap Zap Mallet, Wiley the Board Series. I think today's today's was a special one. I should say, very very special one. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with all of us here. We are very grateful. We're definitely looking forward to you know having you back sometime. So maybe on a different platform. Seriously, seriously. Yeah, to, I'll be, to break I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be obliged. Yeah, the music business. You, you have some very wild opinions. I must say. <laughs> Congratulations, you found the one station that plays Ghana's best urban music. YFM. Listen to YFM 107.9 Accra, 102.5 Kumasi, and 97.9 Takarati.